Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a video here about software piracy and some of the risks that you face with it. Um, now, I'm not going to get into the typical FBI kind of $300 million penalty for every single case or anything like this. Um, there are legal risks to it, certainly, but uh, they don't uh, typically come into play for an individual user, uh, only if you're selling this stuff with uh, or selling computers with this kind of stuff on it. Um, just because it's not worth going after every single person. Um, but there are technical risks, certainly, and if you're not prepared to deal with those, um, it can actually cost you way more than the legitimate copy of the software that uh, you should have bought in the first place. Um, so financially, frequently it doesn't make sense to do this kind of thing. Um, so what this is, Last XP, uh, is uh, actually if you hear some jingling in the background, I'm doing this video of my uh, dining room table rather than my workbench because my workbench is full of computer stuff and I don't have room for this right now. Um, anyway, uh, the jingling would be the dog uh, desperate for attention. Um, anyway, back to this. The, uh, what you're looking at here is the last XP is a fairly common version of Windows that, uh, that has been customized by someone, I have no idea who, um, and then put on various peer-to-peer -peer services and torrent sites and things like that. You can download it. Um, I got this one uh, downloaded uh, version 16.2.3 um, a few months ago, I'm not exactly sure when. Um, it's been a little while, it's uh, certainly not a, a recent thing. But uh, I've installed it on this laptop just as a, a demonstration um, of some of the things that you can run across here. Um, now I'm sure you've all heard of the Conficker worm, C-O-N-F-I-C-K-E-R. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just do a Google search and you'll figure it out. Um, that was done, or uh, enabled to get on computers, um, by a security hole, um, which had actually been patched by Microsoft. Uh, and the patch was available and downloaded and should have been installed through automatic updates for uh, pretty much everybody. Um, in the case of everybody who got infected, it wasn't. Uh, and I'm going to show you why. So what I've done with this, uh, this install, let's back up a little bit here. Um, I've taken the, the last XP DVD image that I downloaded, burned it to disk, and then done a flat-out default install. Uh, didn't make any changes or anything like that, just exactly what the installer typically did. Um, so, and then uh, installed the graphics driver, which wasn't properly installed, and the sound driver as well, um, so that things actually work and windows don't chunk like crazy when they move. But, uh, I mean, there are still a couple of drivers here. Um, Ethernet driver, uh, which you can see right there, is not installed because I don't need it because I'm not actually going to use this machine for anything other than this demo. Um, anyway, services. Um, some of you will know what Windows services are. They're things that run in the background and do system level things that need to be handled, not even necessarily when you're logged in, um, just when the computer is turned on. Um, one of those being automatic updates, which you can see right there. Um, now you can see over here there's a status column that says whether it's started or not, and there's nothing in this column for automatic updates. And if we scroll over here a little bit, um, you see how smoothly I can do this, uh, you'll see that, whoa, not that smoothly, um, you'll see that the service is in fact disabled. That's how it came. Um, if you do a default install of a legitimate version of Windows XP, this is enabled to uh, automatic startup. This starts and everything works fine. Um, automatic updates get installed, well, automatically. That's the whole point of them. Um, now you can say, well, that's fine. I'll just go to the Windows Update website manually and do it. Not a big deal. Well, we're going to go to the Windows Update website over here. And it's been running a little slow, which is why I've got it going in the background, because I don't want it to take up two-thirds of my video. Um, you'll see, though, that it doesn't work either. Um, something else that's on here, uh, which is another important service, the Security Center. Um, you can see there it says, Monitors System Security Settings and Configurations. Uh, it's the one that pops up warnings if your antivirus software is out of date, or your uh, firewall is turned off, or automatic updates aren't working, or something like that. So, without this service running, 
you'll never get the warning that your automatic updates is turned off. Um, is it a problem the, for a standalone machine that's never connected to a network? Maybe not. Um, for something that you're going to plug on the internet, definitely. Uh, because you have no idea whether your firewall is working, you can't get Windows updates, and as I said, things like the Config or Worm uh, Blaster from a few years ago, there's uh, any number of, uh, of malicious software programs uh, that I could go through that get onto the computer through security holes that aren't patched. Um, continue, let's hopefully get this thing going fairly quickly. Um, So these are just a couple. Now I don't want you to take this video as a this is what you need to fix if you pirate software because I haven't gone through this whole thing and I don't intend on going through this whole thing um, to figure out if there's anything else wrong. This is just a couple of simple little examples that are easy to verify. Um, so there may be other stuff. You may, uh, and actually there is another thing which I'll mention in a minute. Um, you may find, though, that uh, you can download this exact copy of Last XP, fix these two things that I've mentioned right here, and there's still another 20, 25 things that are wrong with it um, that will cause you problems. And I actually did, before this default install, I did a full install from the exact same DVD, and there were files that were detected as viruses through third-party antivirus software. This thing actually comes with three different antivirus programs, and if you do a full install, it tries to install all three of them. Um, which is a bad idea because they can conflict with each other. Um, now, I didn't actually install them because I wanted to deal with some other issues. Um, but I installed everything else. And it comes up with a couple of programs that are running, which struck me as kind of suspicious, and I had a look at them and sent them to Virus Total, which I mentioned on a couple of other videos. Um, and they were detected as viruses. So the antivirus software is coming from the same person or group that you're getting the virus from. Strikes me as a little bit of a conflict of interest because what's to say that the antivirus software hasn't been modified um, so that it will ne never detect the viruses that they have given you. Those viruses then go on to log your uh, bank passwords and credit card numbers when you type them into websites and all of that kind of stuff. Um, not really worth it when you consider that the price of a copy of Windows XP Home is only a hundred bucks Canadian, um, or slightly over. Uh, it can cost you a whole lot more than that if you're not prepared to deal with every single potential problem that can come up from this kind of thing. Um, now. This is the error message that you get from Windows Update when you uh, have the automatic updates service turned off. Um, site cannot continue because one or more of the uh, Windows services is not running. Um, and then you get a wonderfully cryptic error number over here. Let's see if it'll focus in on it. Um, Zero, or 8007 okay. um, which is pretty much meaningless to anybody except Microsoft. Um, I've run across that one a few times before, so I know what it means, but uh, I mean, you get my point. That you pirate this software, you do the, the default install, there's a whole bunch of crap that doesn't work. Um, stuff that should work, stuff that's there speci specifically to protect you. Um, and it doesn't do what it should. So, is it really worth the $100, $110 to pirate this when you can get a proper working one that's supported and has all the safety features enabled um, and realistically, if you end up get, having a problem with this and you need a tech to fix it because you can't do it yourself, it's going to cost you a whole lot more than that to fix it anyway. It's an insurance policy. I mean, it's a gamble either way. Um, can you do everything yourself and make it work properly? Or, yeah. Um, but I could go on for hours and hours about this, and your YouTube video limit is 10 minutes, so I'm not going to go cover any more. But that's just a couple basic things. Um, 
if you bought a computer from somewhere and it has this Elast XP on it, you should at least know that it's pirated. Um, because it's not uh, it's not an official version from Microsoft. It never has been. It never will be. Um, especially now that XP is given way to Vista, uh, which is almost given way to Windows 7. Um, so Microsoft is never going to release anything like this. Um, there's plenty of official versions of things out there. You might as well go with an official one because yes, it does cost you a little bit up front, but it can save you a whole lot of hassle down the road.